To get to our base and cap plate schedule, there is two ways we can go about this. We can either go into our search field here and type in base, and then we can see base slash cap plate schedule there. Or from our home screen, under project settings, under our connections inside of the job settings, we have our base and cap plate schedule. Either way should allow you to get to that. So go ahead and open up your base and cap plate schedule. You can see by default there is a BP1 in here. Well if we take a look at sheet S5 we can see our column schedule. For this we are going to work left to right inside of this window. For BP1 we're just going to make that our first 16 by 16 by inch and a half base plate type A. So we just need to compare back to type A and our dimensions shown in the base plate. So BP1 is fine for our piece mark. The plate type we have either rectangular or round and in this case it is rectangular. Our thickness is inch and a half so for this we can either type 1.5 or we can go one space one half. One way we can add the little space there between the one and one half is you can hit the one and then the plus arrow will work as a space key. So you go plus one half and then we can specify the length that is parallel to the web and the width that is parallel to the flange. For our length here we can see it is a 16 by 16 so I can either type in 16 for our length or I could go 1-4 Either way will give us the same results. And we can see there is four holes in here. So we know there's two whole rows and two whole columns. For this, we'll leave our whole column set at two. And then the column spacing, we take the overall plate minus inch and a half, minus inch and a half, and we'll get 13 inches or one foot one. And then we will do the same for our row spacing since this is a symmetrical plate. Next we're going to go ahead and specify our hole type. Well in this case since it calls out that it is going to have anchor bolts in there we'll just leave the hole type as anchor bolt. Looking at type A we can see it is a one inch diameter anchor bolt. So we don't have to change that here. And we can see our hole diameter is automatically set for the oversizing based on the hole type that is set. If we wanted to, we could come in here and specify the welds for this base plate. So with this, we can specify for each of our different base plates if we wanted to use different weld types. In this case, I'm not going to make any changes. Then we could specify our steel grade. And then we could go into the more options. We'll take a look at the more options here in a little bit. Moving to the right, we can see we have a base plate type B that is 10 by 10 by 1. We're going to call this BP2. And then I'm just going to hit tab on the keyboard. And it is going to be a rectangular plate. We can see the thickness is 1 inch. The length or diameter and the width are all going to be 10, so I'll just type in 10 for both of those. Now here's where we can get kind of confusing. How many whole columns and whole rows do we have? So for this, we can see our whole columns are called out as parallel to flange. So those columns are going to run parallel to the flange, where the whole rows will run parallel to the web. Well, in this case, we can see we only have one whole column. So I'm going to type in one. And as soon as I hit tab, we can see it grays out our column spacing. And then for our whole rows, we will have two. Because we know our rows are running parallel with the web, we know there will be two rows for this one column. The row spacing will take 10 minus 2 minus 2. So in this case, it'll be six inch. Hole type is gonna be anchor bolt. The bolt diameter is three quarters. So as I'm tabbing through this, it's just automatically filling that out for us. Now the three quarters is just the default size in there. So that is why we got that in there. We didn't have to fill anything out. So the hole diameter is automatically determined based off of the bolt size. 
or the bolt diameter. We aren't going to change any welds. We're not going to set any steel grades. And then we, for this, we don't need to go into the more tab. Going to the right, we see another base plate type B with the same size, so we don't need to fill out another one because we will just use BP2. Going to the next column over, we can see it's calling out a cap plate and no base plate. So for this, we're going to go CP1. And it doesn't call out a type, so we can just assume that there is no holes in this cap plate. So we're going to leave that rectangular. We're going to specify a thickness of quarter inch. The length and the width are both five because it's a five by five by quarter. And then for whole columns, we're going to assume there is none. So we'll just type in zero. Tab out, we can see it, it turns that field gray. Hit tab one more time to go into the whole rows. Type in zero. Row spacing is going to gray out as well. And then it doesn't really matter what we put for our whole type bolt diameter because there is no holes. And then the steel grade will leave it A36. And we'll continue on to line number four. Going to the right, we see it is a base plate type A, but is a different size. It's a 10 by 10 by 3 quarters. So for this, we'll go BP3. It is rectangular, so I'm going to go ahead and tab out. Our thickness is 3 quarters. And then our length and our width are both 10 by 10. So we'll go 10 and 10. And we know it is symmetrical, so there's going to be two whole columns. And the column spacing, again, we go 10 minus 1.5 minus 1.5, so basically 10 minus 3. So that brings us to 7. There's two whole rows. And again, that spacing is going to stay the same as 7. Anchor bolt for our whole type. And then bolt diameter. We can either type in 1 in this field. Or we can use the drop down and select one either way. Go and tab out. And then we could specify our steel grade, which I'm just going to leave the default A36. Looking to the right, we can see that uh, both the base plate and the cap plate are, are as required. So we don't need to fill anything out there. And then the next one is a type C. And we can see there is a base plate and a cap plate. Well, the cap plate is the exact same dimensions as the previous cap plate, so we don't need to fill that out. But we will go ahead and go BP4. And if we look at type C, it is an L-shaped plate. When we build these L-shaped plates, we are going to build it as if it was rectangular, and then we're going to add those legs to that. In this case, we can see it is a 10 by 10 by inch and a quarter. So we're going to go thickness of 1.25. We could come in here and specify a length of 10 inches, the width of 10 inches. And in this case, because of the holes being the way they are, we are not going to fill this out. Those are in the leg, and we'll use the more tab to get those. So for our whole columns and whole rows, we're going to go 0 and 0. It is an anchor bolt, and it is calling it out as a 1 inch anchor bolt. And then we can just tab through this and see the rest of the information there. Now we can hit the more button. In this more tab, we see we have a left side, right side, bottom side, top side, round plate holes, additional holes, and then drain slash vent holes. The left, right, bottom, and top are going to allow us to go in and add legs to our base or cap plates. Round plate holes will allow us to add holes to round plates in a round fashion. And specify an array and everything that way, which we'll take a look at next. And then the additional holes tab will allow us to come in here and add any holes we would want that are not on a specific pattern. So maybe we have some that are not symmetrical. Maybe we only have three holes on a plate. We can use this additional holes tab to add those holes. And then the drain and vent holes if we're using galvanizing or need those vent holes, we can specify what style we would want. For this, we're going to take a look at our left side and our bottom side. If I start at the left side, 
As soon as I click in the leg length field, we can see this little white arrow or the white lines appear, showing that is the field that it is asking for. Looking at our drawing, this is going to be 6 inches. Our horizontal to first column of holes is going to be 8 inches. Our column of holes is just one column, so we don't need to worry about a spacing. And then our vertical to first hole on the near side is going to be 3 inches. We're only going to have one row, so we don't have to worry about the spacing. And the vertical to first hole far side is going to be 3 inches and only one row. Now we need to do the same for our bottom side. So I'll select bottom side. And again, as soon as I click out or click back into that leg length field, we can see that white line shows. It's going to be 6 inches. Our vertical, the first column of holes in this case, is 8 inches. And we are only going to have one row. We don't have to worry about a spacing. And then our horizontal, the first hole near side. Looking at the drawing, that is going to be 3 inches. And then our column of holes, we just have one. And we don't have to worry about a column spacing. And then we have our horizontal, the first hole far side, which is also going to be 3. And we only have one column of holes there. Don't have to worry about a column spacing. And we're just going to go ahead and say OK. Now as soon as we say OK here, we can see our More button now has an I or an in information indicator next to that, indicating that we have filled out information in there. The next plate we're going to take a look at is our Type D plate, which is our round plate. For this, we'll type in BP5. We'll change our plate type to round. And as soon as I do that, we can see it grays out a few of these fields. We have a thickness and then a length or diameter. So in this case, our thickness is going to be 3 quarters inch. Our length or diameter is going to be the 1 foot 1. As soon as I hit tab from there, we can see it took us over to our hold type. I'll hit tab one more time, and we can see it is calling out 3 quarter inch diameter anchor rods. And then I can specify a steel grade. And then to add these holes, I'm going to go into the More tab. And then I'm going to go to the Round Plate Holes. In here, we can specify the number of holes we want. So in this case, we need four. Next, we have the degrees between holes, which that automatically is calculated based on the hole count. Then we have our radius. In this case, is going to be four and a half. So I can either type in 4.5 or 4 space 1 half. And then I can specify a pattern angular offset, which in this case, we don't have one. So we're going to say OK. One thing you will want to make sure is that you do say OK to this once you are complete. If you hit cancel, it will not save any of the work you just did, and you would have to go through and reset this up. So again, make sure and say OK. We're going to get this warning or alert that says, Note that changes to these marks will not be reflected on gather sheets with a drawing of the original mark. What this is saying is if we had already detailed these plates or the submaterials and had these on gather sheets, it would not automatically change the drawings. We would have to redetail those plates to see the correct information there. In this case, I'm going to say OK. And now it has saved that file off. To show a couple more things here in our base and cap plate schedule, I'm going to open this up. And this is just for example. If I wanted to, I could copy this plate straight down and it would just create a BP6. It copies across all of that information exactly to a T. So I would have to go in and make a change to that if I wanted that. Having two identical plates with different marks will not work inside of SDS2. It will only use the one mark for the plates in the model. There must be a difference in the plate for it to give you a different piece mark. 
For this, you could add something like a zero diameter hole or change the steel grade. To delete a plate from the list, all you have to do is delete out the piece mark. As soon as I delete that out and say OK, if I go back into my base and cap plate schedule, we can see there's no longer that BP6. So if I deleted CP1, for example, out of there, that would automatically condense that list down into only having the base plates there. In this case, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to say OK.